You look at Panama, you look at Mexico, you look at Costa Rica, now the DR. Every single one of these places have gone through the cycle that we call Gringo Vicious Cycle. Here in Panama, the Gringo Vicious Cycle that we've discussed previously, when it comes into full swing, the crime rates spike. The prices spike and the crime rates spike. And uh, when the crime rates spike, the gringos flee. When the gringos flee, the prices pop. Hey Frank, what do you think about what's going on in the DR? Isn't that scary? It isn't anything that is a surprise. Back in 2012, we wrote about this issue in our do-it-yourself Cuenca Ecuador guide. Hey, doggy. Hello, fellas. What's up? <laughs> hey. Okay, so we, we wrote about it years ago because we saw the pattern formulating. And the reality is that once you start connecting the dots, you can see that it's really happening. You can see the cause and you can see the effect and you can see what's really happening in these places because the DR is, I said, no, absolutely no surprise to us whatsoever. Why? Because this situation has revealed itself already many times and every place where it rears its ugly head, we have coined this term, we call it the gringo vicious cycle. So this Gringo Vicious Cycle is really a RAM group, Vicious Cycle, RAM, Retire Abroad Media and Magazines and Groups. This is how it starts out. At first, when they start initially promoting a place, the economy is probably just coasting along or down and prices are low and the foreigners uh, are well received, they're welcome, there may be, depending on where it is, if it's Latin America, um, already a, you know, a certain amount of, of crime already in the area. However, that does change with the uh, RAM promotions when they run it full circle through their, through their system. We've been talking about these things now since 2011, 2012. Now we've been saying it all along since we started helping foreigners understand what it's really like to live abroad. And we see everything happening in this space over and over in, in every one of these, you know, best place to retire, best place to get a passport, or whatever, whatever they call it. But it's basically pumped on the internet. You know, you got places like Vilcabamba, you got places like Boquette, Panama, now the DR, you got Mexico, Costa Rica, all of them have been put th through this ram vicious cycle that starts out in the beginning of telling people they can retire there on their social security check or less than $900, the lowest, lowest. It's like when you see those loss leader ads for your grocery store where they sell one item below cost to get traffic. And that's what they do is they start out quoting a loss leader price, oh, you can live here for less than $900, you know. And of course, that doesn't last. And then the next step is they, they just start incrementally increasing the amounts as time goes on and more people show up. You know, the cycle it just builds uh, momentum as the bubble increases. And this, this happens in a relatively short amount of time. This is not normal organic traffic. It would refer to as a normal flow of people. This is a targeted high velocity increase in the amount of people that are showing up over a short span of time, usually within five years. The place goes from being tranquil, peaceful, you know, just people that welcome you and they welcome your, your tourism to the stages where the prices start doubling and tripling and the majority of the people welcoming you are now expat for profit businesses, people that pile into this thing for the money and it's a very focused group and it's very much foreigner focused, although there are some local participants in that also. 
So, so because the expats form their own little communities in these cities. The, the whole states. picture is one of the foreigner incrementally dropping itself in high numbers into specific areas and pretty much taking over in a commercial way. which also causes the cost of living to completely change to where the locals, I know in Cuenca we watched this with our own eyes, there were locals putting out ads, a family man, I need a place to rent for this much. And the amount that they were saying they could afford after this gringo bubble had started, a ram bubble, were laughable because you couldn't find that. I mean, maybe, maybe you could find something, but obviously they were from a time prior to all the ram pumping. The core issue is the ram pumping, and they're always pumping it to Americans, Canadians, some in Western higher, you know, there's an arbitrage going on. People from much higher earning countries moving to these places that were cheap for a reason. So there's different stages of this bubble that is getting created over like a five to seven year period. And so the first stage is the cheap loss leader stage. Then they slowly, I say slowly, within six to 12 months periods, as people start complaining, well, you know, on forums, I went down there and I can't live on 900. Recently, we have people on forums, I went to Cuenca, I couldn't live on 1600. When people, come out and these responses come forward into the public stream, the Rams adjust their figures. So they, they only adjust their figures as people are bouncing back because of the bubble that's being created. And so they adjust their figures every incrementally and the bubble's in motion. And so we go from places that you're told you can live on 900 or less to in Cuenca right now, people are living on two to $3,000. And another point about this is that because the amounts increase incrementally and in stages, they have uh, relationships. I've talked about this on my channel before, and I just, I'm trying to condense this for this video, but they have relationships with all these different news outlets that cater to uh, different segments of the population, such as Wall Street Journal, Forbes. Uh, initially, they start out with just, you know, little articles, maybe online, you know, but as the amounts increase, they, progress over to business magazines to appeal to a, a business class or people with higher incomes. You know, people in Las Vegas living on $10,000, all of a sudden you can come to Boquete or you can come to Costa Rica or you can come to Vilcabamba or whatever. Name you pick the Dominican Republic and you can do it on only $2,000 or, or $3,000. So this is what happens and the repercussion which leads back to why we are not surprised about the current crime wave and crime spike in the Dominican Republic, which has also happened in all these other locales. You know, after coroners have been going to a place for 15, 10, 15 years, doing things the way they do them, you know, living opulently and such, and kind of in your face to the locals like that. Um, it seems to be just a, just a cause and effect where eventually the crime rates just go up. When the bubble starts topping, the prices are so unrealistic and ridiculous compared to what the locals were used to before that for the bad apples within the society, this is a gold mine, literally a gold mine for them. And the target is you. The target is you. You know, the foreigner becomes the gold mine of the bad apples. It's just inevitable. And so while this is forming, the participants at each stage don't have a clue what's happening. When the promotion progresses from 
the backpacker or the small social security check level up to the two to three thousand dollar level a month that's being pitched to the business person or maybe the wealthier person in the Forbes magazine. Each individual doesn't have any clue that they're being used as a pawn in this, this bubble making strategy by the RAM groups. They, they don't know what's happening. They don't understand. All they hear is, well, I'm spending 8,000 a month to live in Vegas and I could go to name your pick, put your choice of the place and only spend two or $3,000. That's all they hear. They don't know that the places started out, you could live on $700 and then it went to 1,000, then 1,500. Now it's 2,000, 3,000. They don't know where they're at in this. And so because each stage, each participant or person that is getting into this doesn't really know they're entering a stage of a bubble and doesn't really understand what stage you're in and what's coming next, they're completely blind. And the other reason why they're, they're completely blind is because of the suffocation of this information from the vested interests. And you know, I've been talking about vested interests for years, since 2011, 2012. And I don't know when you hear that if you really understand how strong the veil of the vested interest is. You've got to see it for yourself to really get what I'm saying here. Watch this clip. When people come to All Inclusive, I'm not an All Inclusive hotel, people have a tendency to drink and eat more than often. And that's where the problem begins. Because when you get everything free, then you make a party out of it. So sometimes some people may not be capable of, of uh, uh, drinking and eating as much, and that's why you have incidents with heart attacks and things like that. So those are the people Mr. Neary suggested to you may have eaten themselves to death because the food was free. Okay, so you saw the clip. The situation is just completely just whitewashed and just swept under the rug. So that's what you can expect and that's what you will always get from the vested interest, but not from this channel and any other like it. And that's why we left that ram centered area and decided that's not the way to do it. Even though we actually weathered the bubble in Cuenca quite well. Yeah, but we else. started getting um, robbed. We were getting pushed. We were getting pushed. We, we got pushed from the Mercado because you've got, and that this is part of the Ram groups is all the bloggers jump in and all of a sudden going to the Mercado is a tourist attraction. <laughs> you know, the Mercado was a place where poor folks went to get their food because they can't afford to buy it anywhere else. But now it's a tourist attraction and the prices <laughs> balloon higher than the at regular stores because it's a tourist attraction. You know, it's a fun thing to go do, you know, for rich travelers, you know, I mean, rich compared to the locals. But there's way more to, to know about Mercados. Mercados in these foreign countries are for poor people. When I was uh, a boy in Italy, um, we were poor Southern Italians. Let's face it, we shopped at Mercados. You know, so I know what that's like. I was raised with that. And every single place that gets exploited in this way, because that's exactly what it is, it get, it's an exploitation of the insider. It's insi the insiders are the insider traders. And that's the RAM groups, the RAM magazines, and the <laughs> expat for profit. Yep. They're the insiders. They're the ones that are walking away with all the money. And yes, a few of the tourist businesses are doing quite well also. But generally, there's not really a trickle down to the, to the whole culture and the whole society. There's actually a, a displacement of the local culture and the local society. And so, how do we not participate in this picture? How do we do it? Well, it, you know, it takes a little effort. You know, the, the biggest thing that I see is people all over the internet that think Oh gee, all we've got to do is pack a bag, go over here, and life's going to be so different and so wonderful. And I'm not saying that that wouldn't be the case, but it isn't 
separate or apart from this other picture that we're discussing. It's part of the picture. I think it's important for people to know um, the straight skinny on everything and to pretend and stick your head in the sand, you know, and pretend that uh, you're going to some idyllic uh, place that uh, no, no problems exist and everything's perfect. It's just not real. You know, it, it's just incumbent upon each individual person to first become educated. You know, become educated, that's, that's the purpose of our ch channel, is to educate and inform. In order to make a difference, we need to insist or avoid. We need to avoid these places. And that's why we left that ram-centered area and decided that's not the way to do it. If you will do your part in helping others, remember you're helping other expats and you're helping the locals because even in places like Portugal, Portugal has just recently, 2018, 2019, seeing the crest of the bubble. And there's already local Portuguese saying they cannot afford their own rents, especially in certain areas. You know, you've got other areas of the world where you're not called a gringo, you're called a foreigner, not a gringo. So, and especially in some of these places that are touted as, as tax, some kind of tax benefit, beware because you're going to have every business person that is able to utilize that strategy is going to rush in there and they're not going to care what the price is because they're going to save so much in tax even if the place you should be able to live there on a thousand dollars a month they'll spend five thousand dollars a month because they were paying you know ten thousand dollars a month in taxes or or more you know spending two or three thousand more to live in a place where they're going to save ten thousand a month in taxes or twenty thousand a month in taxes you know it's just a business decision for them so they're also unwitting participants or maybe winning participants, they don't realize that they're part of this bubble making ram vicious cycle scenario where the crime rights will eventually get out of control. And Portugal is not immune and no place has been immune. If you look at the history, every single place that has happened. Now, granted some of these places had a certain level of crime already before these ram cycles started, but even so, regardless of, the, of that idea, the crime rates always increase, get out of control, and spike. And the target is always the foreigner. Too many people here living on $500 a month, uh, and then after a while, resentment from criminals. I think, I think a lot of these crimes are resentment. If you look at the way that these criminals are acting violently, because Vilcabamba was extremely peaceful. It was just a tiny little village of just peace-loving and peace-abiding locals. And then after the cycle, the Ram cycle got to it, you know, the crime wave with home invasions and just spiking and out of control and, and that kind of thing. Understand the vested interest, the Ram groups and the expat for profit way that they keep you away from the facts. You have the naysaying expat for profit. We call them vested interests, they're always. And there's a lot of people that will minimize crime and they will poo poo it and then they will make all these statements. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons for them to do so and there's a lot of reasons for locals to get defensive. Um, a lot of uh, times the locals take it personal as a personal insult, which it is not. And then of course, Maybe the government does something about it at some point, but not before people, you know, get hurt. Some get murdered. This idea that everybody's going to pile in 
into this one spot that there's a bunch of poor folks in and you're gonna go live like Mr. Rich Guy in the middle of a bunch of poor folks never made any sense to us from the beginning. There's a lot of hubbub about uh, middle classes and all that, but uh, what you don't realize is that uh, that's not the foundation and the base of the country. You know, it's not middle class like in the States where it's a, a sizable middle class. It's a misleading statement uh, when, you, when you hear that there's rising middle classes. These are designed to make you feel better about your living standards when you go to poor countries. The reality is that percentage-wise, you may have a middle class in these countries, but it's much, much smaller percentage of the population than what we're used to in the States. And the cause and effect is now clearly visible to the layman's eyes. Anybody can see it now that just takes a look. So the solution is that to understand that after seeing the pattern repeat itself over and over, then you can recognize the pattern and you can acknowledge that this is, this is true, this is correct, that this is a cause and effect. This is what's happening and it is detrimental, it's serious. And therefore, we're calling it the dawn of a new age. The RAM magazines and groups are obsolete. They are no longer necessary. It's time to do things differently. Change the way you do things. Why? Because it's good for you and it's good for the locals. If you understand and like this video, share it on social media. Because as you know, nowadays, you may not be able to rely on certain platforms that you know, may not really want to, you know, collaborate. So, you know, if the video resonates with you, share it on any of your own social media places because the word needs to get, get out. This is, this is so detrimental to the locals and eventually becomes so detrimental to you, the foreigner. Thanks for watching and if you like the video, you know what to do and check out the links below. Have a nice day.